Hi, I'm Ben Wilmore, and let's dive in to some type tricks. These are some weird settings you can apply to text to really spice up your results. So let's dive in. All right, I'm gonna start off by just grabbing my text tool. The keyboard shortcut is the letter T. I'm gonna then click and just type fun with, just to have some sort of text on my screen. Then I'm gonna add some effects to this layer. So I make sure the layer's active. I'll go to the bottom of my layers panel to the letters FX. And I'm gonna go over here and choose outer glow. That's gonna add some brightness around the edge of my text. And in here, I can choose what color it is. And if I bring up the size, that's how much it will extend out beyond the edge of the text. I might need to bring my opacity up so you can really see it. And in this case, it's white, so it kind of blends in with the water. The choice called spread determines how much of it will be solid before it starts fading out. So if you bring that up, you'll get a solid edge around your text. And sometimes bringing up just a small amount can be helpful. Then I'm gonna click OK. Now, what I'd like is the effect that you see around the edge of the text, but I don't wanna see the text itself. I don't want the blackness that is filling in the middle of the text. Well, we have some choices at the top of our layers panel. We have both opacity and fill. Let's take a look at them. If I lower the opacity, it's gonna lessen both the text itself and the effect that's applied to it. So when I lower opacity, by the time I get that low enough where I can't really tell that the text is there, the effect is gone as well. But if I go below that to fill, fill means reduce the true contents of the text, but not any effects applied to it. So I'm gonna click on the word fill, I'm gonna to drag to the left, and you're gonna see that Eventually, if I get it all the way down to zero, you can completely see through all the text, but we still have the effect at full strength. And so you can go in here and add all sorts of effects. Maybe I come in and add a bevel and emboss. And with that, I can adjust the settings. The size will determine how far it comes in. Then up here, it will say, what kind of effect do I want? Maybe I want an inner bevel, and maybe I want to soften its shape and then fine tune its size and maybe its depth. But the main thing is I can see right through it. Now there's more though. When I applied bevel and emboss and I applied outer glow, there were settings for how much space it took up. Sometimes I want to change that because oftentimes I end up applying a preset. If I come up here to the window menu, there's a choice called styles. And it all depends what you have loaded, but you should have a few different preset styles. Here I have one of fur. I'm gonna click on it, and that's adding the fur. But know that these preset styles will change both your opacity and your fill. So my fill pop back to 100, which I think is appropriate in this particular case. But with this particular style, you look at all the effects that it applied. Well, oftentimes these preset styles are set up for a particular size of an item. And you might find that if they have any bevel and emboss or anything, if you have a really high resolution photo, it wouldn't be appropriate. So here's what you do after applying a layer style. If you go to the layer menu, you're gonna find a choice in here called layer style. And in there at the bottom, you're gonna find a choice called scale effects. If I choose that, then it's going to adjust all of these effects, every setting that's in those effects, all together. And I just press this little down pointing arrow and then adjust. And now it's scaling a pattern that is filling the text, but it's also scaling, if I bring it way up, do you see a stroke around the edge that has kind of a greenish color? It's scaling everything together. And therefore, if I end up with a layer style that's not appropriate for the high resolution document that I am working on, I apply it and then I do scale layer effects. Remember, you find that under the layer menu and here under layer style. It's the bottom most choice. So that can be nice. But then let's get fancier with our text. I'm gonna come in here and just click with the type tool once again. And I'll type, type, if I can spell. 
Now you can change the size of your text by typing Command A, Control A in Windows to select all, but then it reverses the colors that you see, and I don't always like that. Well, if you type Command H, that's Control H in Windows, it will hide the highlighting. Then I can come up here and adjust the size. But I don't like messing with the number or the down pointing arrow. I just click on the icon and then I can drag to the right to increase it and let go and I see it update. And so I'll get that to the size I'd like. Or the other thing you can do is switch out of the text tool into the move tool. Then just type command T, that's control T in Windows. And that means you want to transform it. And then you can just grab the edges and drag it. Now it really depends on your settings. You might find that you can easily squish it in one direction. If that's the case and you notice it squishing, hold shift when you're transforming and that will constrain the proportions. But it really depends on if this little chain symbol is turned on. If it's turned on, then you don't need to hold shift. And holding shift would be the equivalent of turning it off. And that means constrain my proportions to keep them consistent. But this text, the problem with it is it wants me to change the size and the spacing and everything else using settings related to text. And I want to do something different. So I'm going to press return to finish my transformation so I'm no longer scaling the size. And now check this out. I'm going to go to the type menu and I'm going to choose a choice called convert to shape. Now look at my layers panel. Notice the layer I'm currently working on is a type layer. You can tell it because the letter T is on the far left of the layer, meaning it's a type layer. When I choose convert to shape, watch that layer and you'll see it transformed. Now this is a shape layer. It's as if I used the pen tool to define these shapes and it's no longer text. I can no longer retype these letters. But if I go to my tools panel on the left side of my screen and I grab this path selection tool. The moment I choose it, all the letters of the text become highlighted. Do you see how they have the various points selected around it? Well, then up here at the top of my screen in the options bar, about halfway across is an icon. If I click on it, this means what should happen when, if I move one of these letters and it overlaps another letter, what should it do? Should it just combine the two shapes so you just see solid shapes? Or should one letter subtract from the other? Should I only see where the letters overlap and nothing else? Or this is the option I want, exclude overlapping shapes. I'm going to choose that. Now let's move these letters. Right now all the letters are selected, so if I click and drag, it'll move them all, and that's not what I want. So with that arrow tool active, I'm going to click away from the text and then click back on one of the letters. Therefore, I can move just that letter and I'm going to now move it so it overlaps another one of the letters that are here. When it overlaps, it's going to now produce a hole. Then I can click on the next letter and move it over and wherever these overlap, when I let go, it's going to again produce a hole. Now, when you click on a letter, notice that my little handles here are solid. They're filled in. You might find instead that they're hollow like this. And that's because there's more than one version of this arrow tool and it's really easy to get it automatically switched between the two. If you have the, the hollow arrows like these, then hold on the command key, that's control and windows, and click. That'll get all of those handles selected. Then you'll be able to move the whole letter. Because when it ends up looking like those uh, hollow uh, points, that means you'd want to move an individual point to actually reshape this text. But that's not what I'm looking for right now. So now that I have all these overlaps exactly the way I want them, I'm going to switch to the Move tool. And then, just like before, if I come in here, I can type Command T. And right now it's thinking I'm still working on that path, which is kind of unusual because I'm no longer in the tool that works with paths. So I'm just going to switch away from this layer and back to it. Therefore, it'll no longer think about the letter E. It'll think about all the text.
I can then type Command T, Control T in Windows for transform, and now I can scale that up to the size I actually wanted it. But you can see how one letter overlaps another and produces a whole. But now what if I want something to fill that text? For now, I'm just going to grab this bottom layer, which contains our photograph that's in here. And if you hold down the Option key, which is Alt in Windows, when you click on this layer, and then you drag it, let's say I drag it to the top of my Layers panel, the fact that you're holding down the Option key means you're going to move a duplicate. So therefore, you're going to have two copies of it. What I want is for this copy that's up on top, to only show up where that text is on the layer directly below. There's a couple different ways of doing that, but for now we're just going to go to the layer menu and there's a choice called Create Clipping Mask. If you look at my layers panel, look at that top layer and watch what happens just to the right of the eyeball icon that's there when I choose Create Clipping Mask. Do you see that little down pointing arrow? That means that this layer is only showing up where there's information on the layer below. You can't tell that that's happening because this layer is identical to the bottom most layer in my document, so they just match. But if I work on this layer, I can come in here and maybe do an adjustment. I'll choose image, adjustments, and maybe hue and saturation. Then I'm only adjusting that layer and not the layer that's filling the rest of the document and maybe I bring my saturation down and you can therefore tell that that's only showing up inside the text. Or maybe I darken it as well. But that could be any picture. It doesn't have to be a copy of the bottommost layer. It could be a picture of a dollar bill. It could be a picture of a person's face. Whatever it is, it would only show up where the text is as long as I place the layer directly above the text. And when that layer is active, I went to the layer menu and there was a choice called Create Clipping Mask. Since I already have one, it's now called Release Clipping Mask, which would undo what we have dialed in. So now you've seen that we can make our letters overlap each other and poke holes, and that we can have an image appear within that text. But now let's return to the layer that we worked on earlier, the one called Fun With. In there we have all these effects applied and it makes my layers look a little bit busy. So on the right side of the layer you see an up pointing arrow. I'm going to click on that and that's going to hide all those effects. We still have the effects applied. You can tell because the letter FX is on the right side. I could click that arrow again to see all the effects, but for now I don't need to. Now let's look at one other setting that can be rather interesting. I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer to hide portions of it. I'll go down here to the bottom of my layers panel and this is the layer mask icon. I'll turn it on. Now if I paint with black in this particular layer mask, it's going to hide this layer. And in case you're not familiar with what layer we're working with, I'll turn off its eyeball so you can see it'd be that layer that we'd hide. So I'm going to come over here to my paintbrush and with my paintbrush I'll ensure that I'm painting with black. My foreground color is set to black. Then I'm going to come up here to my paintbrush settings and I'm just going to choose a weird brush. You can scroll through all sorts of brushes in here. Some of them are weird looking, other ones are normal, but I'm going to choose one of the weirder ones. Then I'm going to paint. Let's see what happens. All I'm doing is adding black to the layer mask. I'm going to act as if it's a big scratch mark like a cat would make if it had its claws out. I'll do another one over here. Well, when I do that, notice that the layer style that's applied to this particular layer. Remember if I expand it over here in my layers panel, it's got bevel and emboss, it's got stroke, it's got all sorts of things applied to it. Well, when I end up painting on that layer mask, you'll see that that effect that's being used is adapting to the layer mask, where wherever the layer mask is hiding this layer, it's putting that little stroke around the edge and the bevel and emboss, the drop shadow, everything. Well, on occasion, you don't want it to. On occasion, you just simply want to hide it and not have the effects recalculate to think that you're working on a shape other than the original text.
And if that's what you need, then here's what you need to do. With the layer active that has those layer effects attached, go down here to the bottom of your layers panel to the letters FX. And there's a choice at the top called blending options. If I choose it, that's where I'm going to find a choice of a whole bunch of choices, but we're just going to look at these check boxes. And that's where I'm going to find the choice of layer mask hides effects. Effects and styles are kind of used interchangeably. So all those things like bevel and emboss and drop shadow, they're collectively known as an effect. Individually, they're known as layer styles. But if I turn on this checkbox, watch what happens across here. That's where the effects will no longer be recalculated and it will no longer think that whatever I did to that layer mask should define the shape of this object. Instead, the layer mask should also hide the effects that are there. They shouldn't define where they show up. And it all depends what you're doing, if that's going to be useful or not. So I hope you've learned a bunch of things in this lesson. Think about it. First, we learned that there's a choice called opacity and another one called fill at the top of your layers panel. They act differently. They're going to act exactly the same if you are not using layer styles. But if you apply a layer style like drop shadow, bevel and emboss, or anything like that, that's when they start acting differently. Opacity will cause both the contents of the layer and the effects applied to the layer to diminish. But fill only takes the true contents of that layer, like text, and diminishes it, but keeps the effects at full strength. So therefore, you can see right through the text and only have the edges defined by maybe a drop shadow or a little bevel and emboss. Then we took text and we converted it to a shape. Because when we convert it to a shape, then we can move it around using that arrow tool. By the way, when you have the arrow tool active, you can also type Command T, Control T in Windows for transform, and you could be rotating those letters too. But there was a setting where if we had all the letters selected so we could see the outlines of every one, in the middle top of your screen, right in the options bar, we could tell it what should happen when these letters overlap each other. And I made it so it creates a hole there. Then I can move those letters around using that arrow tool and I can control exactly where they overlap and therefore exactly where those holes should appear. But then if we want an image to appear inside our text, one way of doing it is to put it on a layer above the text. And then in the layer menu, there's a choice called create a clipping group. If you do that, when the picture is active and what's directly underneath it is text, then that picture will only show up where the text is and therefore it's clipped to it. By the way, you can also make the text layer active and add effects like bevel and emboss and drop shadow. Just make sure not the picture is active, but the text is clipped to and it can also have that stuff. Finally, if you end up using a layer mask and the layer you apply it to has layer styles like bevel and emboss and drop shadow, when you paint with black on that layer mask, you're going to find those layer styles change where they appear. They think that the contents of that layer has changed. But if you want that layer mask to only hide those effects and not to find where they would originally show up, like where the edges are, then there was a choice called layer mask hides effects. If you practice with these techniques, you're going to find your Options for working with text will increase rather dramatically, so you're no longer limited to just doing simple layer styles. Instead, you can do all sorts of things with text. I'm Ben Wilmore from Digital Mastery and Masters Academy. If you want to learn from me, then check out mastersacademy.com. That's where you're going to find over 240 hours of me teaching Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. I'll see you next time.